this is a big week for me. I turn 82 and my husband and I will be celebrating our 62nd anniversary. And we're very, we know how grateful, how lucky we are and how grateful we are to be still be together and still be having a great deal of fun. And in fact, our son always says, um, he says, you know, mom and dad, you've been married longer than all of my friends' parents combined. And we always get a kick out of that. So when, they, when people find out we've been married for 62 years, they always want to know how we met. So that's what I'm going to tell you today. And it's kind of a fluke that we found each other, to be honest. I was in high school. I was head cheerleader going alabivo, 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 bivo, bum. And my boyfriend was the uh, star quarterback. So while I'm leading cheers, my husband, who's in the Air Force, is directing films for the Air Force all over, all over Europe, from Scandinavia to um, Africa, to the Azores, to the Middle East. He's, he's directing, I'm leading cheers. Well, I graduate, I graduate LA High, and I go to UCLA where I'm studying art. And I'm also a, what would you call it? I'm, I'm kind of a nursery school teacher and babysitter to about 12 kids all on this one street called San Ysidro in Beverly Hills. Now, I wasn't qualified, but I had a lot of enthusiasm. I really enjoyed kids and I had a lot of energy. So I would think up things to do and play and have a great time with the kids. Well, my boyfriend went to UCLA. I went to UCLA. We planned on getting married. And then one day he said, you know, I think we should break up. We, we shouldn't get married. We should break up. Well, I was devastated. All of my dreams, you know, crashed. So I was at my, uh, at one of the mother's homes and I was telling her all about, you know, that my boyfriend dumped on me and that was it. And she said, you know, I've got an idea. One of my best friends from UCLA, remember my husband went to UCLA also, but he went to UCLA and film in, I think it was either, th uh, I don't know if they had a film school then, I think it was in theater, it was something like that. And she said, I, my best friend when I was at UCLA, his name was Bob Salen. Now he's just uh, sep uh, separated from his wife. My husband married this gorgeous blonde and they were married, I think, for a year and a half, maybe two years. Anyway, she said, I'll fix you up with him. Nothing will ever come of it because, you know, he's very sophisticated. He's much older than you, 10 years, and um, he's brilliant. He's funny. He's traveled all over the world. He's great looking, but I'll call him and have him call you. Well, okay. I said, fine, and um, thought nothing more of it because I thought once he finds out I'm a teenager and cheerleader and going to UCLA, he'll probably be pretty bored. But one, one day I was at, it's funny, I was at my sister's house and I guess he, um, uh, this friend gave him my sister's phone number and he called me up and introduced himself and said, um, would you like to go out this week? And I said, sure. He said, what are you doing? And I, he said, what are you doing Friday night? And I said, do you want me to be honest? And he said, sure. And I said, not a damn thing. And I think he was so impressed at my honesty and I didn't fudge around. I was just straight that he thought, huh, this is unusual. Let's go out Friday night. I thought, okay. And that's how it started. So he, he picked me up at my home and my mother opens the door and I walk out and I take one look at him and think, this guy is great looking. And not only is he great looking, but he's got a fabulous sports car. 
Now it tells you how little I know about sports cars because it was a Carmen Ghia and that's like an upgraded VW. But I thought, oh, this is really cool. Um, and he said, if you don't mind, let's drive back to my place in um, uh, uh, Brentwood because I'd like to change my clothes, you know, and get more casual. And I thought, sure. Well, we go back to his apartment, which really is an apartment. It's like a little muse cottage. And you drive down this charming little road. They had charming little roads in Brentwood in those days. That was, and there were eucalyptus trees all along the road and charming little cottages. And I go into his cottage and one wall is all used bricks. It's surrounded by beautiful trees. There's a little um, backyard. Well, it isn't a little backyard. It's a patio in the back. And I was immediately charmed. Um, he, he changes his clothes and says, would you like a martini? He's not used to 19 year olds. And I've never had a martini in my life. I don't even know if I've had a drink. But I said, sure, I'll have a martini. You know, I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm up for almost anything. So he makes me a martini. I even remember the glass. I even remember the decanter that he made it in. And he, you know, he puts the gin in and he puts the ice in and he pours it into these very elegant little glasses. And then, so we're talking and we find out, I, I mean, he's 10 years older than me. He's traveled the world. I'm still at UCLA studying art, but we, we can't stop talking. We're talking and talking. And he said, well, let's go to dinner. And I said, why are we going to dinner? This place is so charming. Why don't we cook dinner? And of course he's stunned. Nobody says let's cook dinner, but you know how much I like cooking. And I even cooked when I was a teenager. So we go to, it was Westward Ho. I'm a little, you know, a little tipsy because I've never had a martini before, but I hold on to the, the, um, you know, the, the market cart and we go to Westward Ho and he likes, uh, top sirloin steaks. And I said, I'll make a salad. You can barbecue the steak and we'll have dinner at your apartment. I think he was stunned. As I say, nobody says that. Well, he cooked a perfect steak. I made a salad. I don't know what was in the salad, but I made a delightful salad and we sat. He had the only furniture he had were two director's chairs and this very low um, coffee table. So we sat on the, oh, and what did he have? These huge tannoy speakers that they use in, what do they call it? In like recording studios. I mean, they're huge. I mean, really big. And he puts on I think it was Ella Fitzgerald and singing Rogers and Hart. Do you guys remember Ella Fitzgerald? Maybe some of, some of you of my age remember Ella Fitzgerald and Rogers and Hart. Very elegant music, charming music. And we sit on the floor and eat dinner off of on his coffee table. I remember it was glass. I don't remember the color of the director's chairs, but I remember the, you know, the coffee table. And we sit there and have a delightful evening. We never stop talking. To be honest, in 62 years, we've never stopped talking. In fact, people see us in restaurants together and they say, what are you talking about? I can't believe it. You're the only, I mean, you know that we're old, we're both gray haired and we're so busy talking and communicating. And it turns out we both love art. We both love skiing. We both love music. We both love, um, uh, books. We both love, we both love the same things. So we're always talking about the same things. There's never, we never have anything that, that to not talk about. And we just talk. Well, we continue to date. I've got to tell you what he had in his refrigerator. He was really a bachelor. He had salami and gin in his, his in his refrigerator. It was really cute. So we continue to date and we became more serious. And I think he dated some other women, but he continued dating me and he was really confused or he was, he was disturbed because I was 19. Can you imagine your 19 year old daughter getting married? 
I can imagine, I think of my granddaughter and I think there is no way that a 19 year old is getting married. But so he went out to dinner one night with one of his best friends and he said, you know, I love Sandy. She's, she's loving, she's giving, she's beautiful, she's caring, she's, um, she's everything wonderful, but she's 19 years old. And he said, his friend said, what are you waiting for, rigor mortis? And that kind of did it. And Bob decided he was going to ask me to marry him. Well, he asked me to marry him. We decided we'd wait till I was 20 so that he didn't marry a teenager. And as it turns out, his mother became very ill, very seriously ill. And I thought, gee, if I was his mother, I would, I would love to see him get married. Well, she was at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital and she was really seriously ill. And we decided to get married right away so that she, uh, she could see our wedding. And the day I turned 20, we had a wedding at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. Nobody had done this before. We took over the sunroom, we put up a chuppah, we had lovely flowers, and just the immediate family was there. And Bob and I got married at the hospital. And the best, one of the best things about this was, I was a nervous wreck. In fact, I was, I was um, in the hospital, I was looking at the phone book. They don't even have phone books today, but I was reading names in the phone book because I was so nervous. But the, the rabbi is giving us a blessing and suddenly I see, I don't know how to say this dis discreetly, uh, mucus coming down my nose. And I'm looking down and there's this mucus coming down my nose and my husband to be, he puts his hand right here. I mean, is that love? That's love. And he gives me his handkerchief. I blow my nose and we're man and wife. And that was it. That was the beginning. And it's been, we've always enjoyed one another. When we travel, he loves, I love going to museums. He loves going to museums. We skied together. We played together. We had hard, you know, nothing's, no marriage is, is perfect and is that smooth sailing. But you know what? We were both willing to work on it. We were both willing to talk about it and work on it so that here we are 62 years later and it's even better. My husband helps me with my, with YouTube. He's my, my director, my editor, and we have the best time even making these videos together. So we're still doing it, still having fun. Happy anniversary, honey. I love you.